Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about transportation in plants. We have already learned transportation in animals. So now we are going to learn how transportation takes place in plants. Now transportation in plants, it is very very slow process. Because the energy needs are very very low in plants. Now why the energy needs are very low? One reason is the plants they are stationary. They do not move. You know animals they move uh, in search of food and in, uh, for doing other um, so many works etc. So their energy requirements are very high. But plants they are stationary, they are fixed in one place, they do not move. So their energy need is also very low. So they do not need uh, a very fast transport system. Secondly, there are large proportion of dead cell in plants. That is why also their energy needs are very low. Now this transport system in plants, it takes place by the two tissues that is xylem and phloem. Xylem in plants help in the transport of water and minerals. While phloem it helps in the transport of food. So children please remember this. Do not get confused in this what is carried by xylem and what is carried by phloem. This usually comes in short answer questions in MCQs also. So you must remember that xylem it carries water and minerals. Food is carried by phloem. You can very easily remember also. Jo Hindi ka fa hota hai. Fa se food or fa se phloem. So remember like this. So you will not forget it then. For say food, for say floya and water and minerals are carried by xylem. Now first we will learn how water and minerals are carried. You know plants uh, of course they prepare their food by the process of photosynthesis. Right. But it is not only the food or the water which is required by the plants. Water is a uh, very important component for the process of photosynthesis. But plants they require certain other uh, substances also like nitrogen, phosphorus, right? Some mineral salts also. So that is carried by xylem. These minerals they get dissolved in the water. They are present in the soil. So from there they get dissolved in water and they are carried by the xylem. These are also very important for the growth of plant. So this, the vessels and tracheids which are present in the xylem. Last year in class 9, you read about the elements of xylem as well as of the phloem. Xylem, it has uh, tracheids and vessels. Of course, it has xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers also. But that has nothing to do with the transportation. Only the two components, that is vessels and tracheids, Help it, uh, help the xylem in carrying the water and minerals. So vessels and tracheids of the roots, of the stems and the leaves, they are all interconnected. And they form a continuous system of water conducting channels and reach to all parts of the plants. Now, uh, there is a difference how the water and minerals are carried in the short plants and the tall plants. The requirement is also uh, very uh, very much different. In uh, short plants like suppose this is a plant right? and these are the roots under the soil and the branches coming out from here. Right. Now, if it is a small plant, what will happen? Now, this is soil here, then uh, roots and in the soil water is also present. 
and the leaves are coming out from the branches here. Right? These are the leaves. So here it can very easily reach by the process of diffusion. Right? From here to here. As I told you, they, these are interconnected. The seeds and the, uh, sorry, the vessels and the trachees which are present in the roots also here. Suppose these are the cells present, right? We take it like this. Now in the roots, then in the stems, this way, and then in the leaves going here. This. These are all interconnected, right? And they form a continuous channel. So that the minerals and the water can reach to these leaves. And in small plants it can simply, by simple process that is of diffusion, it can, the water and minerals can reach here. But uh, now what happens because these root cells, right, these cells, root cells, they are in connection with the soil. They are in direct contact with the soil. So they are taking up the ions directly from here. Now, when the ions will pass from the soil to the root cells, there will be a difference in the concentration. And to uh, minimize this difference, what will happen? Water will rush in. And that is how along with the water, this will form a continuous channel. Continuously, the water is being taken from here. And this water it will reach the leaves. So this is how the process goes on. But what happens in tall plants? In tall plants, plants, in tall plants, suppose you take a plant like this, and these are the roots coming out. Now in tall plants, the water is continuously evaporating. Now during daytime, the water keeps on evaporating from the stomata of the leaves. We have read about this before also, that how stomata, they keep on opening and closing and continuously the water keeps on evaporating. Now when the water will evaporate from here, a suction pull will be created. Now what is a suction pull? Like when you put a straw in a glass of water or cold drink and you suck it up. Right? What happens? The water from the glass, it reaches to the straw and into your mouth. Because a pressure is created in that. Now same way here, the water is continuously evaporating from the cells of the leaves. Suppose these are the cells of the leaves. Right. So they are in continuous connection here with the cells of the roots. So here a suction pull will be created and the water will rise up. Same way as the water rises up in the straw. Same way here also the water will rise up. So continuously the water is evaporating up, going into the environment and the water from the soil goes into the cells of the roots and from the roots it, uh, through the trachees and the vessels it forms a continuous column and it keeps reaching up. This is how transpiration helps in pulling up the water, the suction pull uh, is created and the water is pulled up. So in uh, short plants or in small plants, it can simply take place through the process of diffusion. But in tall plants, uh, the suction pull mainly it helps in, uh, the suction pull that is created by transpiration. That will help in uh, pulling the water up, especially during the daytime. And at night time, of course, root pressure, that will create the uh, or that will play the important part. 
So transpiration. Now what is transpiration? It is the absorption and upward movement of water and minerals dissolved in it from the roots to the leaves. Or in simple language if we say it is the evaporation of uh, it is the evaporation of water from the leaf uh, or from the stomata of the leaf to the environment. Secondly, transpiration also helps in the temperature regulation. Right? So this is how the water and minerals are carried by xylem. Next is how the food is carried by phloem. Now food it is prepared in the leaves during the process of photosynthesis. Now this food has to be transported to all parts of the plant. In xylem, this is always unidirectional. The movement of water is unidirectional. That is going from the roots to the leaves. It is never backwards. But if there are certain branches in the tree like this, and there also the leaves are present. So what will happen? The water will go in the, those leaves also. But never backwards. That is towards the roots. But in phloem, when the food is prepared in the leaves, it has to go to all the parts of the plant. So the movement can be upwards also and downwards also. And this movement is known as translocation. That is from one place it is going to the other place. That is transport of soluble products of photosynthesis. You know, what are the soluble products of photosynthesis? Sucrose. That is the type of a sugar. So, the transport of soluble products of photosynthesis as well as some other uh, things also like amino acids, some other products also which are produced to the storage organs of roots, fruits, seeds and the growing organs of plants. So this is known as translocation. And what helps it? As in xylem, the trachees and vessels, they help in the movement. Same way here, sieve tubes and companion cells. They help in the movement of food. They, they translocate food both in upward and di downward direction. And in movement of the sucrose from one place to the other, that is from the leaves to the other organs, it utilizes some energy in the form of ATP. ATP means adenosine triphosphate. In xylem, of course, the energy which is required, that is in the physical form like suction pull, etc. But here the energy is utilized in the form of ATP. And during this movement of food, some osmotic pressure is created. Osmotic pressure increases. Now when this osmotic pressure increases, what will happen? The water will rush in and water will help in the movement of food. It will push the food from one place to the other. So this is how the transportation of food takes place in plants. Let us do some differences between xylem and phloem. I've already told you also the difference between xylem and phloem while doing this. We have been, I've been telling you how it is different. But uh, let's do it in the tabular form. So xylem and phloem. Now, xylem, it helps to carry water and minerals. While phloem helps to carry The soluble products of photosynthesis or you can simply write food also.
that is from leaves to all parts of plant. This is from roots to leaves. Secondly, the movement is unidirectional. Unidirectional movement. And here it is bidirectional. That is, the movement can take place in upward direction also and downward direction also. Third, energy requirement is very less. That is mostly in the physical form. While here, energy is used in the form of ATP. Then one more difference you can give tracheids and vessels help in carrying water and minerals. While here, sieve tubes and companion cells help in carrying food. So these are the major differences between xylem and flowing. So that's all in this topic today, transportation in plants. Next uh, we will do excretion in human beings as well as in plants. So till then keep studying and don't forget to share, subscribe and like my channel. Thank you.